back again to another amazing episode my name is hayford if you don't know who i am i'm a content creator a cinematographer and this is the diaspora transition episode i'm interviewing people who move back from diaspora and currently living here in ghana and are doing very you know so many great things so on this episode i have here with me a couple who moved back from the u.s and currently living here in ghana without further ado the shepherds hey. welcome on the show oh, thank and you. i had i had you called kofi uh -huh. and she's a fia yes <laughs> friday born you're a Ghanaian. Yes. yeah who gave me that name <laughs> well because we were born on friday they oh told us that's what it was so wow the majority of the Ghanaians that we've met mm -hmm. they told us well, what day were you born on we'll tell them friday oh, okay so you're kofi and then also you're born on friday too, okay right? wow wow welcome on the show thank, thank you sir. but thank you, normally what i ask for my first question is why ghana but before that i would like you to introduce yourself for people who are watching right now uh -huh. who don't know who you are okay. your story where you came from where you grow up okay introduce yourself you want to go? who want to go first <laughs> okay well, I'm Charles Schaefer. Uh, they call us Kofi. Uh, born and raised in Dallas, Texas. I've been born in Dallas, Texas. I uh, grew up and I graduated from Dallas and then I moved on to Houston. And then I moved to Atlanta. I've been in music for my whole uh, adult life. I've been playing drums uh, for many different artists. So I've been touring and traveling and just enjoying music. Uh, music has uh, opened up a lot of doors for us to be able to travel. So. We'll get yeah. to that. We'll yeah. get to the details yeah. of that. Yeah. And, uh, okay, so I'm Kenya, and, or Afia, and also I was born in Texas, in a small town called Sulphur Springs, which mm -hmm. is outside of Dallas, Texas. Mm -hmm. um, and I met my husband seven years ago in Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. I, too, have traveled the world uh, okay. as a singer and producer, music wow. producer. Mm -hmm. Wow, so we are talking about the USA. Uh -huh. you, you, you keep saying Dallas, Texas. In yes. Yes, <laughs> yes, So yes. USA. In the USA, yes. Okay, okay. Now, you have been traveling the world because of music. Mm -hmm. How did it come about? Uh, How did it start? You said well, you started... Um, of course, we, we began in church. Okay. All of us began as as young young musicians and young vocalists and young artists in church in the u.s okay. so in the u.s majority of us got our um, beginnings in church and so okay. we grew up in church and we were playing for many different gospel artists many different gospel choirs mm -hmm. uh, many different festivals and things like that then from church we uh progressed on to like the local jazz bars or jet like local jazz clubs and start playing for different local artists and things like that and so from there we began traveling yeah same uh same story you know most of us who grew up in the states who are singers or artists not everybody but mm -hmm. most of us grew up in the church mm -hmm. and um, i became a wedding singer and an anthem singer so i did a lot of the u.s national anthem at many different big events like mm -hmm. the cowboy stadium uh the dallas cowboy stadium and things like that so yeah well but without just your experience and talent you didn't get anywhere to go but Gara, why are you bringing I mean, well you have to look at it bigger than that okay. i mean this is the continent of africa okay why not come to the continent mm -hmm. if we've worked all over the united states mm -hmm. why not come to the continent and okay. work here and okay. give the gift that we were given mm -hmm. from the divine in the united states okay. that allowed us to make a living for mm -hmm. ourselves there wow. so now we have the opportunity to bring the same gift here Beautiful. and do the same thing here. wow yeah. but when you tell that to Ghana, is that you're leaving the usa uh -huh. i'm yeah. telling you yeah. Yeah. you yeah. know yeah. it's it's bigger than that like yeah. he's saying you know for us um we do this for a living music is a living we don't have this job and this job and this job we're entrepreneurs yes like we, we have a soap business where we make soap but at the same time um music has been the the, the bread on the table you know for us so being able to go i uh, sing behind even different artists major artists that you may have heard of you know i don't i won't name it name but them let's see I, people know listen, who you are man, let's start let's naming. Go. i've just played from i've 
done a show with Bobby Brown. I okay. With Bobby Brown, done okay. some things with Angie Stone. Okay. Um, when I was growing up in church, I played for Bishop T.D. Jake. So oh, wow. I was the drummer wow. for the youth service at the Potter's House. And wow. then from the youth service, I began to fill in in the main service when the main drummers would go out. So upon me growing up in my in my level of musicianship, I grew up in the Potter's House when they first transitioned to Dallas, Texas. So Beautiful. from the Potter's House, I moved on to Atlanta, Georgia, and I mean, New, uh, Houston, Texas, okay. and began playing for different artists in Houston, Texas. Wow. Uh-huh. Wow. That's yeah. an experience. Yeah, yeah. You know the yeah. big boys. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah. You know them. Yeah. Okay. friends. Yeah. You'll play for these people. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. we can call them up if we need to. Yeah. Um, but more than none, you know, again, why not? Why not, John? But, but let me ask you though, what triggered that move back? Because yeah. people are saying, hey, America is doomed. Sorry to curse. Somebody go down. It's okay. You know yeah, you do it. You do it. So let's talk about that. Yeah. Well, I tell you this. Mm. Um, Long story short, mm -hmm. uh, we like long stories. Okay, so well, coming up in the church, I, I will say that I've actually pastored before oh, wow. and and led choirs and things like that um, in ministry. A lot of times in the church, they'll call me a psalmist because I preach and sing. Um, but more this this may shake some people, but it's our interview, right? Yes. <laughs> Our spiritual journey is a bit different and it has changed in the past two years. Um, we have sought for a deeper understanding with our spiritual life from head to toe. And we've been digging, like researching, like let's talk about Egypt. Let's talk about what we call Kemet, not Egypt, mm -hmm. you know, or al Kibulon before it became Africa. So when we started digging for those nuggets, we started finding some truths that you know, I felt like we're um, completely opposite of what we learned coming up in the Christian church. Okay, so we no longer, and I'm saying this, he doesn't have to. We no longer label ourselves as Christians anymore. Okay, so, and why is that? Uh, are you ready for that I'm conversation? I'm ready, I'm ready. Okay, you wanna? No, I'm ready, <laughs> okay. I'm ready because, um, you go ahead. Well, um, I will say we, we trust in the divine, the almighty. We know that we're, we're here not on our own, okay? Um, but once you start digging for those truths, you start learning who you are. And knowing myself and knowing the, the God inside of me, you know, is actually how I'm living and breathing and this and that. It's not per se a Sunday service. It's not per se a Wednesday night service for us anymore. So. I'm going to leave it at that <laughs> um, and just know that we do, we do believe in the, the, the divine, the divine uh, God particle, some people call it, or the uh, energy, divine energy. We are believers of that and we meditate, okay? We have our altars. Okay, so you, you want to say you're more spiritual than right. I want to say religious. more African spirituality, okay. actually. Spiritual okay. okay. Exactly. Uh -huh. More spiritual. I like that. Religious. But how long have you been in Ghana, though? We've been in Ghana going on two years. Two I mean, years. Two years oh. in February. Wow. Uh -huh. Wow. Yeah. Tell me, okay, where you told your friends and families that, hey, oh, <laughs> I'm leaving the USA. Listen. Uh, I'm not coming back here. I'm going to Ghana. Listen, it's mixed emotions. Yeah. Okay. You have some people who are, okay, well, we, we're praying for you and we hope everything goes well. And we have other people who are like, y'all are crazy. Why are you going? But I mean, it's, 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 it's your life. So you get to do, you know, you know, you get to do what you want to do. What about the media, your mom, your dad, what was the response? It's a uh, different responses. My mom, my mom is a traveler, so she's more open. She's more. Okay, you going to Ghana? Okay, it's a bit far, but I'll get my passport and I'll work some things out. My dad is not coming. He's, he's, no, it's not it. He's, gonna, he's a fisherman, and so he loves fishing where he is. He's retired now, and he's, he's enjoyed the life that he's built for himself. So getting my dad on, a, on an airplane to come from the USA to Ghana, it may be a tooth pull. Now, if, my, if his wife brings him, then we may get some action, but... <laughs> on his own, it won't happen. <laughs> Before you speak, I had someone on the show who said, every black American 
should at least visit Africa before they die. They should. Yes. They should. should. We should. We should. We should because it belongs to us. This land belongs to every. Before you even say American, black, every our race people, our race people. This land belongs to. It ain't. It ain't got nothing to do with American. It ain't got nothing to do with tree. It ain't got nothing to do with God. It ain't got nothing to do with airway. We are all one. When I meet a guy or when I meet an airway person, they speak. Tweet, God, airway, and English in one sentence. That is amazing. <laughs> that means you are one. Yes. You are one people speaking to me and five other people at the same, same time, time in many different languages. Wow. And everybody understands what you're saying. True. That means you are an amazing human being. True. And with us being on this land, we have so much to give back to this land. Wow. We're not here to fight or, or, or challenge you or mm -hmm. any type of way. Mm -hmm. We know you were born mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. But we're here to now mm -hmm. help build to what we can become. Wow. This beautiful. land can become yeah. the most beautiful land. We will that speak has on that. Yeah. yeah, we will speak on that. Yeah. How was your, uh, your well, reaction? For, for me, I guess it was how how it, I, I made sure to break it to them in the way that they would understand. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're not just going to Ghana, but we're also um, giving back what I know. We gave one thousand percent in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Why not give 2,000% on the motherland, where we were stolen from, you know? I don't consider myself a foreigner, like you guys think we're foreigners. I feel like I am my ancestor, and I am you. I am you, you know? So breaking the news to my mom <laughs> was, um, we're musicians, so it's yeah. nothing shocks them that it's comes from, we travel everywhere. all anyway. Yes. Uh, for my dad, it was okay because he knew that we were coming here too to uh, help with some schools. Okay. Some of the public schools that we are donating 30 big boxes of books to and wow. helping build a library and things like that. So You're here in Ghana? Here in Ghana. Oh, wow. Um, Ashalaja. Ashalaja. Am I saying it right? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Maybe you're so right. <laughs> that place, I believe, is called Ashalaja. Okay. I'm saying it correctly. Yeah. That's where we're starting, cool. you know, with, uh, with our books and helping build the library there. And wow. Getting some things on the wall and things for children to wow. write with. Chairs and desks wow. for them to sit on. So we have a mission mm -hmm. coming here. Mm -hmm. You know, Ghana is home for us. Okay. I can't say that uh, in two more years we're going to be right here at Ghana. Mm -hmm. But we, we can, can always go out and come back yes. and talk Ghana home. Yes. And, and that's, that's how yes. we're looking yes. at Ghana. Yes. Let me ask you this. Do you feel welcomed in Ghana? As yeah. a, you know, most people think you're all brony. You said it, uh, right? Brony, yeah. right? Uh -huh. Do you feel welcome with that kind of words to flying around with brony? Do you feel welcome here in Ghana? I do. I feel. Well. I feel like I'm I home. I feel it right at home. Yeah. And I don't blame the people for calling us the Bruni because it takes you to get to know me first. Exactly. And then once you get to know me first, see, upon meeting us, you always have a barrier yes. without us speaking. You've already um thought of a opinion about me before i actually speak to you so once we begin speaking then we recognize okay we can break all these barriers this is bro this is sis we can make some things happen and so once we once we get that to, to that relationship building all those other words start to kind of fizz out. Yeah, now they're starting to help us learn the local language and things like that. Because it's ah, oh, small, small. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, Uh huh. Wow, that's nice. You learned it. Uh huh. Wow. Let me ask one more. Okay, the first time you guys stepped foot on the continent, this might be spiritual, emotional. Walk us through that feeling. Whoa. I'll start with you. Thank you. I cried. Wow. And I can't even tell you why. I just felt an overwhelming... Because, uh, to be honest, uh, a year before we came, we never said we were coming to Africa. One morning, uh, we looked at each other. We had our own music business there. We, uh, I produced... We produce, um, and we have an online homeschool as well. Okay. Okay. Back so years. everything. Uh -huh. Well, we still do the online school, oh, okay. even though the time difference is. Okay. It's okay. okay. That, uh, we're learning, but um, getting on the land was almost like the ancestors just came and gave me a big hug or something wow. when I stepped off the plane. 
I couldn't even tell you. He was just like, baby, are you okay? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm okay. I'm just, we're here. <laughs> and I couldn't believe it. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I mean, yeah, it was overwhelming. Wow. Was it the same for you? Yeah, it was Wow. I was yeah. more of the protect, Make making sure my baby was good, consoler, <laughs> and everything. But it's, it's the same feeling, mm -hmm. just knowing that we had so many ancestors come from this side of the water, and now we've never been over here before. Now we have the opportunity to come and actually put our feet on this ground mm -hmm. that, that many people have grown up and become leaders and become mm -hmm. um, um, ancestors and have become just great examples of how to be, you know, our mm -hmm. race human beings. So that other people can see how we're supposed to live. So that just is just a power that you don't really feel in the U.S. Mm -hmm. when you step on that ground. But mm -hmm. when you step on this ground, it's like an energy that comes up from yeah, the ground energy. and it runs energy. all the way through from the bottom of your feet energy. to the sole to the crown of your head. Wow. It makes you feel like you're royalty here because you know you are royalty. You are, you're, yeah. So you're surrounded by a yeah. lot of royal things that grow naturally for you to partake in. So yeah. once you get here, it just it just it just makes you feel the more that you already know you are. Yes. So when you say I am that I am, it just makes you feel like you are that I am because it's all in the nature as one. So I, it's great. I like that. What do you have to say? I see you have, you have something to say. I mean, it's just about you know being here. So a lot of times um, the misunderstanding is why do you want to come here? Yes. You know, so when you're grown, we, you, I, I grew up comfortable. Like my dad is, uh, he holds a professional title, boxing title. Okay. Okay. He's a um, welterweight in the state and now he trains a lot of people. Wow. Um, so I was well to do i never wanted for anything okay but still when you see our other brothers and sisters being mistreated um i've never been mistreated but i could tell the difference in school there was sometimes like i grew up um in a classroom and i'm the only they call us black there okay You're the only black person in your class wow um, but it didn't bother me and it didn't bother my friends i grew up around a, a lot of caucasian people white people my the town i grew up in was what? predominantly white people what? it was east of dallas texas okay so sulfur springs texas it's what um it's the dairy capital of the world so it's not hard to find mm -hmm. uh even though it is very small um but again what Ghanaians, what we have uh, come to realize is that some of you don't really understand where we're coming from. When we're seeing our, our people brutalized or mistreated just because of the color of their skin, how can I honor a place like that? You know, their constitution that we learned and we grew up under does not, is not fair to black and brown people. So as an adult and on this spiritual journey, I would be a fool. I'm talking to myself, not anyone else. I would be a fool to remain there and give my whole 2,000% when I know my 2,000% can be used here. This is, this is inspirational because most, most Ghanaians don't understand. They think it's just about the money. And I had someone who said, listen, it doesn't matter how much money you make in the U.S., the peace I'm having here in I'm Ghana, telling you, I won't trade it for anything. Anything. It's, 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 anything. That's the case for you guys. Yes. yes. Okay. Because we don't, we don't see most people come over here with tons of vacation money, and things to spend. Right mm -hmm. there. We don't. We're not in that mind frame. Okay. We're in the mind frame of coming over here to Spiritual. be upon, among the citizens. Okay. Kind of hear mm -hmm. how you feel because mm -hmm. we need to live amongst you. Yes. And so we can't. We, we're not living a lavish life mm -hmm. if you're not living a lavish life. We don't, okay. We don't. We, we want to build like together. We yeah. Build together. We want to. The continent. We want to see that the, <laughs> the road is broken. Okay. Yeah. The roads do need to be fixed. And mm -hmm. like, let's organize a community type situation okay. where within our communities we could probably do a community fund mm -hmm. and get something fixed instead of worrying about or mm -hmm. waiting on the government to mm -hmm. do certain things. Okay. Let's let us get together as a full community and see what we can knock out yes. before we worry the government because they're already going to do their own thing so let's just do what we can do before we you know get on there or uh, worry them about anything and there's lots of freedoms here when yeah. i say freedoms you know in the states you're comfortable 
you can go to sleep and you know that there's satellites and security watching you you know and that's fine and dandy but it it has nothing to do like when you look in your rearview mirror and see a police officer and you may come he may come to your car and shoot you mm. isn't that is that, that straightforward like is that straight it's that easy it is. to happen it's that easy it's that to easy happen. happen if they feel when they feel threatened or they don't have to feel it's just a power thing in the united states most uh officers like to um, express their power they like to express that they are the enforcement mm. so in the United States, everybody gets to carry a gun, so everybody's always on edge because of that. That's why it's really not peaceful there, because here, citizens don't carry guns. No. You may get somebody who may sneak one in, mm -hmm. or one of the police officers may sell it to somebody, but the normal citizen doesn't carry a gun. And with that, that is a level of peace that the citizens in the United States will never understand, because wow. we have to almost live with our gun on our hip. Hmm. in the united states because at wow. any given time anything could go off why wow. so what triggered that why why did it become so important to carry gun on your head when you go, uh, when you go? well i mean you know I mean, when you're living in a when you're living in a state that that feeds off of war when, yeah when you're living in a state that is constantly in fear see fear will cause you to always take up a weapon so if you if you are a whole country that lives in fear of another country, maybe doing something to your country, you're always going to be armed with a weapon because you never want to be caught off guard. Yes. So that fear, that worry, because you're doing things that you have no business doing, or you're in other people's affairs that you have no business being in, you have then that, that, that way of fear or worry on your back. So because of that, you're always watching your back and you never want to be caught off guard. So that's why you always carry a weapon. And so that's why the United States of America is in the position that it's in now, because it carries a lot of fear and a lot of worry that it may get invaded one day. And everybody needs to be able to be protected. Mm. Every family needs to be able to be protected, mm -hmm. whether you're in the military or not. Everybody needs to have some type of protection on them to kind of combat that anxiety, that okay. fear, that okay. worry. Yeah. I see. I see. Now, you guys been through it all in the U.S., all the negative part. Yeah. You chose to leave that behind. And come to the promised land. Mm -hmm. You guys are here in Ghana now. Yeah. Okay. I've seen you everywhere. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Playing good music. Uh -huh. Singing good music. Uh -huh. Okay. Let's talk about Ghana. Okay. Okay. Are you enjoying Ghana? We are. We okay. Ghana. Yeah. Ghana what do you like so, so far? Your most favorite thing about My it? favorite thing is the hospitality. Okay. Like, <laughs> I, I, the only way I can compare is because we came from the States. Okay. Um, you have, see, people don't understand that Africa has many, many countries, just like the U.S. has many, and there are 50 states in the, in the U.S. So we operate just like every, every state is just like a country. You see what I mean? So we don't know the affairs of Arkansas. We don't know the affairs of the other states, even though we're one country. Uh, but here in Ghana the the hospitality even though you will have people call you obruni or this or that more than none i don't even have to it's not about that but it's just that you put yourself in the way to do that you know what i mean i don't even want you to open the door i can open the door you know or i can cook or i can drive but because your heart is so i can do this let me help you that's beautiful. Wow. It's beautiful because you don't have that helping hand okay. in the States. Okay. I have a big family. That's why I'm comfortable. Okay. But outside of a big family, you don't have that type of um, comfort and hospitality. Okay. Yeah. It's not like that. And uh, I love the work ethic here. Mm. The work huh? ethic here. <laughs> Ghana. Work Ghana. ethic? I love the work ethic here. You tell me With about so it. much. With so much. Because you have so little, you mm. work so hard. Like even okay. you, you're working now. Yeah. Okay, but you don't even recognize that you're yeah. doing some good work yeah. because this work is going to cost thousands. Yes. Okay, I take the Chocho -cho driver. Mm -hmm. I admire the Chocho -cho driver mm -hmm. because he don't make a lot, mm -hmm. especially the mate. I admire the mate because mm -hmm. he don't make a lot. Mm -hmm. But they get out there every day not knowing how much they're going to bring That's home, true. but they're going to bring it home anyway. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I'm telling the you. The taxi driver, yeah. he gets out there every day. The motorbike drive. I know people get so mad about the motorbikes, but 
what else work do we have to do here? Yes. So I got to do this work that I'm ava- that I'm allowed to do, and I'm going to do it well. Yes. So yeah, I might get caught in traffic, or yeah, things mm-hmm. might not be 100%, mm-hmm. but madam, I got your package here. Yeah. I got your food here. Yeah. I delivered everything you needed me to deliver. Wow. I come to the house. I'll cut your grass with my machete, yeah. and then I'll spray it. That's wow. hard work. Yeah. You That's understand? Hard work. Yeah. Americans don't understand cutting no, grass with no. a machete. They will never understand what that's like. I've done it myself. And I can tell you that Americans will never understand what it's like cutting a whole acre of grass with a machete. That is work to be appreciated. You deserve an award. And you deserve some good recognition for the work that you put in. So regardless of how the Ghanaian looks Mm -hmm. at their work being low, when we come in, I'm actually like, I enjoy you working so hard. That makes me want to give you more. I like your perspective because I've had people who said, hey, listen, Ghanaians are too laid back Uh, for my liking uh, and they are timing. But uh, you you seem to be saying quite the opposite of that. It's not that they're laid back. It's just that the circumstances kind of puts them. Mm. I've I've recognized that the circumstance that the local Ghanaian is has put them in a place where they've had to adjust. And if they don't have any control over gas prices going up, if they don't have any control over market prices going up, then I can't blame the local Ghanaian mm. for still going out there every day mm. with an attitude saying, I'm not getting a raise, but the Mongo just went from two CDs to four CDs. And I still <laughs> gotta go to work on the Chocho <laughs> to make it happen. You see, I don't blame the local I don't blame the Ghanaian for that. I blame other people for that because every every tree, every branch on this tree of Africa is supposed to be working so that everybody can give off the fruit they're supposed to. But if you have one branch on the tree that's not doing what we have it to be doing, then we're going to have to work extra hard to get it done. It's just like an ant. When the when the when the ant hill falls, they don't get mad at one ant. They just say, "Okay, we got to work together to make it happen, regardless if we get whatever we get or not." So that's how I feel about. I, I enjoy the work yeah. ethic because even if you have a little or a lot, you're still going to get up every morning and sweep and make sure that your storage or that your your frontage is clean so that you can welcome in the next customer and keep it going. Wow. Now, you, you seem Ghana very different then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, okay. It's a, you I, think I it's possible the, to make it here on yeah, the continent? The continent. <laughs> if, we're, if we're praying for a one united continent, okay. then you have to see the both of, of everywhere you go. You have to see the good and the bad we recognize that number one i tell you i don't like burning trash i don't like burning trash but i'd rather recycle it and i'd rather us have a trash system that actually works for every community we were talking about negativity yeah yeah but it's all roses from what you've you've said so far Uh it's beautiful yeah right but there's challenges of course of course okay let's talk about the challenges let me start with you Okay. okay Okay, two, let's do it, three challenges okay. you, you faced so far since you moved back. Okay, sanitation. Okay. Water. Okay. Which may be part of the sanitation. Okay, okay. you were under the shower and the cut off? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, the lights. Oh, uh, yeah. So, um, because we bought a one-way mm. and we um, didn't scope out the land, no. we just came. We Go never back. came. Go back. You, were coming. you, you bought a one-way ticket to Ghana. One-way. Ladies and gentlemen, are you hearing this? One challenge. They bought a one-way ticket to Ghana. One and that's it. Wow. Yeah. One. Now please continue. I love that part. <laughs> now, granted, before we came, because of everything America shows us about mm-hmm. Africa, we had no clue what we were walking into. Wow. We've been on several continents, but never to Africa. Wow. Um. We bought our own shower. <laughs> we bought a, a portable shower. Wow. It's a camping shower. So it's not too bad with the water mm-hmm. going off at times. You got to put it in the bag. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can take both the but it's nothing. It's, it's refreshing, you would say. Right? I'm telling you, and it keeps you humbled anyway. This inconvenience is for America. I would. I still would take Ghana. Wow. I still would take Ghana. The lights would be my third okay um because i we're producers yes. and singers yes. so if you don't have a generator yes. you are out of the game yeah <laughs> when Especially the lights today go off. you guys yeah, yeah. Okay. today yeah. Yeah. yeah the light went out and yeah. you could you couldn't yeah perform. okay okay i see how that would be an inconvenience yeah what other inconveniences so, have you uh, my challenges i say um 
the 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 restrooms for the schools. When you go to the public schools or the SHS or the, yeah. the schools, that's a challenge for me. And it, it all still ties into sanitation. That's just another big part of sanitation. I don't like it that the kids have to, you know, be forced to go to use the restroom in certain conditions in 2022. Right. I could see if we were, you know, back then in the olden days. But we're in 2022. And if we can drive Land Rovers and yeah, Bentleys exactly. and, and all these other nice cars. We can at least make sure, even if we're not going to completely do the windows and things at school, just at least make sure every school has a functioning washroom so that the children can wash properly and throw their trash away properly. So that's really one of my major inconveniences. Everything else, the water, the lights, these are just the normal things that kind of happen. But those would be the three inconveniences. Okay, so which is similar to, to yeah. that, uh -huh. including the sanitation yeah program. yeah okay but with all this you guys are still here and absolutely years and still standing absolutely Strong. because we I, we see we, we're visionaries my okay. wife is a seer i'm a visionary we we see things for the better of what they could okay. be and i know okay. that all it's going to take is one local Ghanaian to get into leadership to change everything mm. in his years of mm. office yeah. you see what i'm saying okay. all it takes is one Ghanaian to do what the other Ghanaian didn't do mm. okay if you see things that need to be done you have the opportunity when your name is called to yes. do the things that needs to be done okay. so don't worry about it. don't okay. complain just always be preparing yourself okay. in the in the background that way when you're called to the foreground you're already ready with your, uh, you're ready with your um, um, memorandum. You're memorandum. ready with your, you're ready with your um, um, constitution. You already have things written up, and you don't need permission. You're saying, okay, I'm here at the table, and this is what I have to offer. Wow! If you're given the chance, right, uh -huh. to change one thing about Ghana, huh? Africa, what would that be? Solar. What? Lights. Solar lights. What is solar that? farm? Solar farm. Solar. We would make Ghana, we would light up Ghana. Okay, okay. And Ghana okay. would not lose electricity okay. because we have we have enough mountains mm. to put solar farms and wind, and, and and wind turbines sun. all around. We have enough sun and wind and water. We have enough natural resources to give us electricity forever. So one of the first things I would do is install electricity so that people who are on life support don't die when doom so happens. Yes. Or that people who are taking the breathing machine when the lights go off, they now have they're now back to their breathing problem. Wow. These wow. are just yeah. that, that's one wow. of the things that so, we would fix. We so would turn the farm. lights on and we would turn the lights on for twenty four hours ago. Wow. They wouldn't go off. I like the way you the way you said it. Echo Acorn is in Africa, somewhere yeah. in Senegal yeah. uh -huh. and doing something similar. Yeah. I'm telling you, it, it's it's what um if you know a, a state called Oklahoma, they got it. They got that. Uh, where they're doing lots of the wind turbine and mm -hmm. the solar. See, the people don't even have to pay because it's natural. Yeah, it's natural. You know, can you can you imagine the whole of Ghana not having to pay for lights because we have the proper solar? But why do you think we we don't have that here? Yes. Uh, Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm no. Go ahead. Okay. Well, I believe I believe we don't have it. It's, it's, it just all has to do with leadership. leadership. Yeah. And I'll just say leadership. Right? I'll say leadership because everybody has an opportunity to be in leadership. And when you take your opportunity to be in leadership, but you do other things, then you'll see where your priority is. So all it is is the only reason why we're having these problems is because the right leaders have not come into office to prioritize the mm. things that needs to be prioritized to put things into this property. I like space. that. I like that. That's I like that. Why. Wow. Leadership. Mm -hmm. Leadership. Leadership is it, mm. leadership is a whole nother ball game, mm. but it still requires us all to be on the same Do you think field. our education system led to that kind of thinking where we don't think to solve problems? Uh, you know, I believe so. Mm. Um, we could go so many directions with that uh, question. Mm. Just on our personal level, being educators, you know, we, we went into a bookstore here and we saw um, a, a social studies book. And in the social studies book, instead of calling the slave owners what they are, they told, and, and even colonizers, 
they didn't call them that. They called them um, traders. Mm. Like they just were trading. But you were trading human bodies, slaves. You see what I mean? What I mean is instead of teaching the, the whole truth and allowing our land, Africa, Akibulan, to know exactly who we are, I think that has a lot to do with our thinking nowadays. Mm. Even as we get older as adults, mm. if you were raised to believe that they were just traders, T-R-A-D-E-R-S, mm -hmm. not a traitor, mm -hmm. but a trader, like you're trading goods. Mm -hmm. you're, like business. Yeah. Mm. But what right is that? Mm. You know, instead of teaching the truth about things in our textbooks, mm. and that's the problem. Okay. And that's something we also okay. want to change. Well, not really change, but we want to offer mm -hmm. a, a, a different education. Education. Curriculum. Okay. Okay. So, um, let's talk about what well, you've been here on the continent. What are you uh, doing? For me, I know what you've been doing. Some of it. So, um, tell me, what have you guys been up to? And then let's talk about what you know you do, and if people even want to patronize, what they have to do. Okay. So, we are a music company. We are a okay. music production company. Mm -hmm. What we do is, we um, when we're out, when we're not home writing and producing and teaching on our online classes, when we do come out, we're coming out to offer a stage or a platform for other musicians and artists to come out and meet us and then learn from us, learn okay. with the, the, the different types of music because here in Ghana you have high life. High life is high life is very big here and it's yes. a staple of the country. Yes. And so what we bring is we bring a diverse nation. We bring a whole nother genre of music. And so what we I like to do is just to offer the musician the opportunity to just learn many mm -hmm. different uh, rhythms and styles of music. Okay. That way it'll help open you up just in case okay. you ever want to be an international musician. Okay. We um, allow you to come in and be prepared for that. So okay. We, okay. we train musicians in, in different styles of music. <laughs> And then we also offer music lessons and voice lessons and things like that. Oh, wow. Uh -huh. And so for our open mic, our open mic is just a stage for creatives to come out and express themselves and, and network with other different uh, music managers okay. that can help take your um, uh, career to another nice. level. Okay. Wow. Now I understand it more. Yeah. Okay. I've seen you singing. I like your voice. By the way. And you are singing the local Ghanaian songs too. Yeah. How, how long did it take you to learn that? Oh, uh, not very long. It's, even though I don't really understand the entire language, mm -hmm. uh, because I'm a musician, when I hear it, I can just stop. Uh, mm -hmm. I sing in French as well. Okay. Sometimes I don't even know what I'm saying. I have to research it. <laughs> I sing in French uh, and I've, I sing in Spanish. Okay. I do know what I'm saying in okay. Spanish. Okay. okay. But where did you get that from? Well, Spanish. <laughs> oh, that's like a second language in the States. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. It's first it's English, then it's Spanish, okay, and so then if, French. Okay. If someone is watching right now, they are here in Ghana, maybe they came from the diaspora, they want to learn how to um, train their vocals, try to uh, sing. Or, do you guys offer that? Yes. My wife is the vocal oh, really? oh, Yes. Yes. She is a trained vocal technician. She will get you right. <laughs> Okay, so for your information out there. <laughs> okay. Okay, let them contact you. Okay, so if you want to contact us at CK Productions, uh, we are an international music group. Mm -hmm. uh, you can Facebook us at The Shapers mm -hmm. with a C, not mm -hmm. an S. Okay. C-H-A-F-F-E-R-S or Kenya or Charles mm -hmm. Shaper. Also, our Instagram would be under Kenya G Music, mm -hmm. okay, because okay, I do a lot of the management when okay. it comes to that and our okay. booking and things like that. So, yeah, wow. again, our handles are Kenya G Music or at the Shapers. Yep. Okay. Or you now, can, uh, go ahead. Oh, what's up, number go two? Ahead. Or you can email us at CK okay. Productions. CK Productions, IMG at mm -hmm. gmail.com. Okay. CK Productions, okay. IMG at gmail.com. Beautiful. 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 I like that. Thank you. You, you guys are thriving here in Ghana. I've seen you, what you're doing, and it's, it's really great. Yeah. You know, the fact that you guys had to leave America to share what the talents you have yeah. uh, with the Africans. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, let's let's talk about current affairs. Mm -hmm. Will you say, with all these challenges and everything, you guys are still comfortable? Comfortable, yes. Yeah. You're yeah. comfortable? Yeah. yeah. I mean, our home is home. 
Okay. You know, <laughs> and our where, where we live at, it's it's very it's very safe. It's very cool. We pretty much know everybody in our community. Okay. We walk our community, mm-hmm. home, so they see us all the time. And I actually just graduated from driving school. <laughs> oh, in Ghana. Yeah. Oh, so you can drive here uh, now. <laughs> driving in Ghana yeah, is a whole different ball game. Whole different ball game. But I um. I went to Jabon Driving School. Okay. Uh, and I graduated, uh, wrote my exam mm-hmm. and everything, and okay. went and did the driving test at Timber. At Timber. Timber. Okay. Uh-huh. Wow, so, congratulations. Yeah, yeah. So, now you, you see how to play with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. You have some fun. Yeah. Okay, let's. Um, <clears throat> people often watch this show and they see how excited you guys are to move to Ghana and say, oh, it's a paradise. Ghanaians are saying, listen, because you are privileged. You have an American passport, right? Yeah. So you can always leave any time so you don't see the negative side. You only, you know, see what it could be. But <laughs> if we should take this citizenship from you and say you are now a Ghanaian, you have a Ghana passport, will you still think, do you think you'll still be able to live here in Ghana? Of course. Man, take my American passport and get here. I want a Ghanaian passport. Okay, man. you want one. Yeah. Mr. President, please <laughs> give them some yeah, passport. Yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> we, we didn't come here. We didn't come here to go back and forth. We actually came here to encourage others that this is the next. Africa is the next place. Wow. Okay, America, wow. Babylon is falling. Okay. America okay. Is falling. Let's talk about Babylon. Babylon. Is falling. Let's talk about it's Babylon. Falling. Yes. It's, it's falling. falling. It's falling. It's falling. It has fallen. It has fallen. It has. And all this doing but still, the dollar is still 18 is to, uh, <laughs> to God I see. You have to see the narrative. Okay. When we, from a, from a child, okay. even at the, uh, the meet and greets, you go to mm-hmm. meet and greets and you mm-hmm. meet all the diaspora, we are all here on the same mm-hmm. whim. It's like Mama Earth, I mean, M- Mama Africa called us back okay. home. <clears throat> And then we're like, okay, so why did you move? Well, we don't, we don't know why we moved. So what did you see? Did you be, have you been here before? No, because we we've only seen the kids with the big bellies and the flies on the TV. Out on the TV, that's all they wow. show us. Wow. We had no clue. Now we're not dumb and we're not fools. Mm. We know that this is 2020, and we know that Africa is royal. Beautiful. So of course, there's something other than what they're not showing us you see so <laughs> you know it, it's not we're not going to be going back and forth that's mm. why we told you we bought a one-way ticket, ticket to you know and even our families right now wow. some of my mom even when she watches this she's like oh okay so we bought a one-way <laughs> ticket. it is what it is wow we're here to wow. help build africa back and okay. i'm not saying africa needs help mm. but at the same time you have to remember we were stolen from here it's true and it's true only unity is strength okay. okay okay the word unity is in community okay okay it takes us all together to get this place back but one thing that i can't understand is the white jesus here i okay. don't understand that here hmm. I let's talk about it i don't understand i don't understand how we have a spirituality for the for our land and we don't follow it do you think it's is the um fault of the uh religious leaders uh, because it seemed to teach something way different well I would say it, it has to do it has a lot to do with the religious leaders and it has just a lot to do with our personal study we yeah I personally get into our personal study and say okay, okay. somebody is always going to tell me something is demonic but until I actually go into doing the research myself and allowing those allowing that to speak to me then that then and only then will I actually understand the truth. So it yeah. has a lot to do. The religious leaders will only tell you what they will learn themselves. Prosperity. Exactly. And I if they five CD, I pray for you, get yeah. one And if I, they don't want to learn any more outside of that, that's all it's gonna be. And yeah. You have to be the one to say, Okay, that's cool. But there's more and I'm going to go where more leaders. I, okay. I appreciate the chiefs yeah. and how they keep their traditions. Because that's what we need. You know, we need to see where we came from. It wasn't always Christianity. So why are we stopping there? In the States, the Bible is only, what, 260-something years old. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. (laughs) 
I had a great great grandmother that lived to be 117. Mm -hmm. So in her lifetime, she never saw the Bible. Wow. Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times we have to come back and revisit just to know who we are. Yeah. Okay. So if someone is watching right now in the diaspora, they want to visit. Okay. They want to come, but they can't come. They are scared. What would be the advice for them? Uh, drop your fear, family. Fear is the number one thing that you have to drop about coming to Kemet land or the mother fatherland. You have to drop your fear and you have to know that there's room for you here, home. This is home. And there's always room for you. You just have to drop that fear. It's not going to look like the United States. So you might as well get that out your mind. <laughs> it's not going to look okay. like the United States. Okay. So don't even think about mm -hmm. it being anything like the United States. Because if you come over here in the United States frame of mind, mm -hmm. you're already going to be defeated in Ghana. Because yeah. Ghana is not the United States. Africa is not the United States of America. It's a different mindset. It's a different spirit. And so you have to be willing to come over here and drop everything from the United States and pick up everything Africa. And wow. once you drop everything from the United States and pick up everything Africa, then you'll begin to feel right at home because mm -hmm. you're picking up your lineage, you're picking up That's your heritage, true. you're picking up what used to belong to you so long ago, mm -hmm. and you don't have to hold on to the things that the people have always told us is right now. Mm -hmm. No, this is not it. Mm -hmm. It's more and it's better. You just have to stop being scared mm -hmm. and release your barriers and don't look at people a certain type of way. Give them room to grow on you and build okay. that relationship. Okay, okay. What do you have to say? I concur. I just, um, I believe that, you know, to each its own, every household is their household. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to peace of mind, everybody in the world wants peace of mind. Yes. Okay? Yes. I found my peace of mind right here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even through challenges. Wow. I have a peace of mind. Wow. I like that. Yeah. I like that. And the challenges are easily. Yeah, easy. it's easy. It's not anything that's. Yeah. It's not anything that's eternal. These challenges can be fixed okay. overnight. Okay. So we in the game. Okay. So you've been here. You've seen everything. Okay. What do you think you you wish you knew before coming to Ghana? Uh -huh. Yeah. You wish like I wish I knew this before coming to Ghana. Well, for me, for 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 us as far as personal. Um, I think about how a lot of people come over here with, uh, they live off of their government, you know, they're old and they're retired and they get this check, they check in every in. month. It's not the same with us like okay. that. Okay. okay. We still have to work. We are in our prime. Wow. So if, if we had known, if I had known, there would have been some things that I would have established to be reoccurring there as we you get established okay. here. Okay. Um, again, we're not hungry mm -hmm. or anything mm -hmm. like that, so mm -hmm. it's not like detrimental. Okay. But if I had known, I would have set up a little bit more things okay. over there to give us residuals, so we won't have to. Because you know we can't work here yet. We're not no. citizens. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You need a. Work yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's good that we've seen yeah. it everything, but you can't just apply for a job. job. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Right. okay. I see. I see, so you advise people to find something doing there that can pro pro provide so revenue. Yeah, yeah. And you don't have to because mm -hmm. the bare minimum mm -hmm. is what we see a lot of Ghanaians live. Mm -hmm. And I told Charles even last week, I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. we don't have to go to a palace. You don't have to go to China Mall, any of these places. Everyone around here has everything we need. Yes. We can right. live the bare minimal and be good. Okay. Right. <laughs> okay. What about those who want to come for business? They want to come do something on the continent. Okay. You've been here. You've seen other um, diasporans open business uh -huh. and, and succeed. Yeah. Right. Some do fail and go back. Yeah. Uh -huh. If if you are to advise someone on a business idea that you think will thrive oh, in yeah. Ghana, what would that business be? Uh, I believe anything solar. Anything solar. solar. Okay. If you can provide something small, like even a small storage with solar. Okay. Uh, you, okay. You take on a, a, a small business. I, I would encourage you to come in and look into the small businesses and to see where you can help the local businesses okay. that start with them mm. because once you start there then other businesses will begin to kind of pick up on what you're doing I so like that. anything solar or um, computer, computer tech tech things or like tech. that uh, or okay. libraries and things okay. like that yeah, yeah. educational and if you are a um a curricular writer mm. uh, a writer 
that that knows how to present curriculum to the government okay. for you know for the for the educational ministry to be able to look over and things like that. Those things would be necessary too. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. And, okay. Yeah. Okay. Transportation. Yeah. What are you? <laughs> Transportation. <laughs> yeah. Same thing. Um, I, I concur. A lot of times we talk, even though you're interviewing us, yes. it's like we're even interviewing ourselves okay. a lot because wow. what can be done? Mm -hmm. We're always like, if I had a million U.S. dollars, <laughs> I would do this, 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 this and this yes. in Ghana, yes. you know. So we have a lot of ideas and just what he said, I concur. You okay. know, I believe that each community needs a library. You know, one of these days, you won't be able to look at your phone. Mm. You're going to have to open a book again. Okay, or, really? I would be... I, okay, tell me about it. I'm telling you, this world will okay. not keep lights one of these days. Okay. Yeah. You need to go back to books, to, to learning things, mm. you know. Right now, Google teaches everything. Yeah. We have a grandson, mm -hmm. and he is not even one yet, but he can open the phone yes. and go to Google. Okay. It's too much. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you should always know how to read a book. Yes. You should, you should but why do you think we have to go back to that past before we can read books? We can read books now on Kindle. But we don't. <laughs> but we don't. Yeah, we don't. Right? No, everybody doesn't. And Everybody do doesn't have access to Kindle. Okay. And the necessary resources right. like the things that we're talking about are like ancient egyptian books oh, from where we came find, yeah. from you can't find that you're not going to find it on google on google you see what yeah. i mean some people have written and some may be on kindle but the original text you're not going to find there okay i see where you're coming from okay okay so um i normally ask with all this you know good experience and good feedback you guys are saying Compared to America, you think Ghana is better than the USA? Yes. You want to? Of course. Explain, convince me, and that, that my camera guy, <laughs> why the US is better and uh, Ghana is better than the USA. Ghana is better than the US because of its standards. Okay. And because of the people, the US allows any and everything. Ghana doesn't allow any and everything. Mm. Ghana doesn't allow certain. Gunna doesn't allow certain sects of people to be openly parading around. The U.S. does. Gunna doesn't allow citizens to carry firearms. Okay. The U.S. does. Gunna is very open, and I, I can see where. The, Should I push you? The, go ahead, push me. But I can see you where the LGBTQ plus. I'm not. I am not against. I am against you teaching mm. things to other children mm. who does not need. To be influenced by your personal decisions. By sexual acts. I am okay. against that. Okay. Now, what you do in your private in your private life? Yeah, that's you. So that's all on you, Charlie. Is this one of the things that pushed you from you know America to because it's in one of the, it's in the okay. ranking. Yeah. Okay. You know, okay. besides the p police brutality okay. and okay. Um, and the miseducation of black and brown okay. children. Okay. And see, I, I taught in the school system, so I know the lies that we have to teach the children. You know, besides all of that, um, you know, Ghana, your question was about Ghana being better yes. than the States. Yes. Okay, so for me, it has more to do with um, being around our people okay. and being around family, okay. community again. See, there, you don't get community like you do here. In Ghana. You know, like, we don't know. Your neighbors check up on you. Every, every day. Every day. Okay. That is, that is precious, what you say. It's, it's true. It's true. They, they make sure we're okay because they know that we're kind of new in the community. But okay. anytime they see us, everything is always on okay. the up and up. Okay. So I, I believe Ghana is very much better than the United States because of the peace factor. We have a level of peace here that we will never understand in the United States. Yes. And above all, that's what really matters in your spiritual walk. Because you can make money wherever you are. Okay. If you have a good business plan and you are a good and you are a hard worker, you can go wherever you need to go to make money in order to provide yourself a safe and secure living. Right. Mm. So the peace factor of it all is really what's different mm. in Ghana than in the United States. Okay. And on top of that, you have more natural resources than what the United oh States could ever imagine. Woo. I mean, Ghana will never experience a food shortage in the tree because wow. all you have to do is go to the bush and get everything you need. 
Okay, we grow moringa trees here, let naturally. Mm -hmm. We have oranges, we have apples, we have mango, we have coconut, we have pineapple. We will never go hungry here, regardless of what the, the TVs tell you. Mm -hmm. We don't have those same natural resources in America. Ghana has gold. We don't have gold in America. Okay. There's no gold in America. Okay. Wow. You see what I'm saying? So wow. in, in, in these natural resources alone, Ghana is already more valuable than the United States just on its natural resources alone. Wow. And so if people come here and get into natural resource investments or natural resource farming and mm -hmm. getting to different uh, businesses that help provide different um, foods and agricultural um, pro pro products to the local community, then you will never have to worry about anything. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let me yeah. ask. You think it's possible to be a millionaire here in Ghana? It's, in it's possible. There are already millionaires here. So yeah. I mean to move back from the U.S. or yeah, to, to not be and then become one here. Yes. To not be and become possible. one. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's possible. You it think the opportunities and and and. You know that Ghana offers to to the diaspora and even to business. It's possible oh, to make that money. Yet. I'm not sure about that. Okay, you 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 yeah, might I feel differently. I don't I don't know. It, I would have to see a business actually mm -hmm. get to that point. Okay. But I mean, I believe it's easier for a local citizen to work his way up to millionaire status than a diasporan mm -hmm. is because. A diasporan is already coming over with money. Okay, you see what I'm saying. Okay. So it won't be but hard. I think it's quite the opposite for me. Okay. I think um, foreigners are more li likely to be millionaires. It depends if it you're depends. coming here really with enough money to establish okay. yourself. Yeah. Okay. Okay. For us, okay. we're middle aged. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, uh, <laughs> if we still had to call mommy and daddy, <laughs> uh, we may be able okay. to for some help or okay. something. Or, or if our grandchildren are there and mm -hmm. we can't get to them, mm -hmm. our moms and dads okay. can help okay. there. You know, it's, it's a bit different. But okay. one thing I wanted to say okay. that I haven't heard in anyone's interview, even looking at other YouTubers, if you really understand what has taken place on this land, mm -hmm. how many other cultures, mm -hmm. and I'm not talking about black america uh mm -hmm. africa mm -hmm. americans i'm talking about other people frenchmen chinamen other people now i granted i have chinese friends mm. i have french friends mm -hmm. we all grew up yes. you know together however when it comes to their land mm -hmm. they own their land okay when you go to france they own their land mm -hmm. when you go to portugal portugal portuguese own their land black america where is our land well, we're here now. Yeah. This is our land too. You know, we're not here to, to come and say, this is our land. We're not saying that. We're saying we're one people and this is our land too. You yeah. see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So once the Ghanaian and other African countries realize that we have to take our land back, I don't think there'll be any type of poverty anymore. Okay. I don't think there'll be any, um, any wars any types of different types of wars, you know, or borders. We wouldn't even have to have borders, to be honest with you. Okay, so as far as uh, our contributions, we're, we have, um, we brought some material that we're helping a couple of schools, like with um, biology posters and things that will help for the learning. At this point, uh, last year, we started a, a charity like from the states to try to get people to donate to help okay. us get the books here because 30 boxes of books is very expensive to get over here mm -hmm. and we still haven't gotten them here we've oh. only we only we bought 14 big suitcases worth and then we have um some more that we've gotten since we've been here but as far as uh trying to get the books here mm -hmm. we would love that you know if, if people can help us get those books here to help build this library that okay. we're doing that would be amazing. Wow. Okay. So how, how would they reach out and what do they have to do to... to so um, we actually have, it's coming from CK Productions. We have a cash tag, which is uh, the cash tag CK Productions with an S on the end. Um, and all of those things go, every time someone is donating, they're going solely for helping uh, the schools. Right okay. now we have Australasia. Uh, Ashalaja, I think I'm saying it mm. properly. 
that's the school and they have two different um, levels it's primary and secondary oh, so okay. it's a lot of children like a thousand children there yeah, yeah. so we're trying to help in that area specifically first okay, okay? we also have the uh, i know you're talking about the ancestral wall where, where there's another library in Hong Kong okay that that we are also con contributing books to as well. So okay. the main thing is getting those books. We have full curriculums that are written over there in the States and we're trying to get those books here. Okay, all right, that's good. You know, God will bless you for, you know, doing this. Yeah. And um, before we, 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 we end, okay, most Africans are saying, oh, it's not possible to make it in Ghana. I need to go to UK, US before I can make it. You think, you said it's possible to make it here. If you have an advice for the African youth watching right now, what would that advice be? That advice would be to keep working hard. Um, I know it may not look like it's, it's paying off, but it will if you just keep working at it. Um, don't try to sway too much towards the, 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 the scams. You know, try to stay as far away from the money rituals as you possibly can. Um, keep your work honest and righteous and if you keep your work honest and righteous then things will turn around for you it it, it happens like this everything is not overnight like we want it to be right but if you are working honest and you're working hard and you're putting your best foot forward in everything that you do then you can and you will be successful whether you're making 10 CDs a week or 400 CDs a week or 10 CDs a day or 400 CDs a week. You can do good work. It's going to take a while. It's not going to be overnight. Okay. But don't stop working hard and don't stop working nice. Okay. Because it, it can't happen for you. Okay. It can't happen for you. Okay. There are many that. locals here who is work for you, So it can work. Okay. It just looks bad. <laughs> <laughs> I think, get I think that for the youth too, um, we have to think for the future. You know, we're even trying to get our children, even though they're grown, come, come, because there's work to be done. There's a union to be you made. Your children? Yes. Oh, you guys have children? Uh, yes. How many? Three. Three? How old? Oldest? <laughs> 21, old 20, and uh -huh. 11. If they're in the U.S. watching right now, <laughs> okay, what, are, what message do you have for them? To our children? They should come back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> y'all already know. We don't already talk to y'all. Yeah, so, come home. Xavier, Savannah, Zion, <laughs> Michael, Zayden. Y'all come on home. Why do you need to bring, bring them along? Did they, did they say, oh, I'm not coming? They're grown. They're grown, they're grown okay, they're with their own lives. Okay. They're, they're helping each other out okay. while we're okay. here. And they'll visit, I think. Absolutely. Oh, of course. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. I like that. Please continue what you're saying. <laughs> I think the youth um, here need to consider the future okay okay and mm. it's the same thing youth around the world we're all in our phones mm -hmm. we're giving our our snapshots and we're doing everything through our phone but if we can just ground ourselves especially the young adults anyone 17 and older um, just get it in your head that there's a future to be lived okay one of these days even if you do go to America you want to come back home mm. trust me you want to come back home where it all started for you okay and that's not the same that we we can say mm. now trust me we have family that we miss we miss our family but it it still will not supersede the mission that we're on okay. right now here on okay. this land okay. now i you say come back home come back home and we have been pushing that but someone commented on the video that hey listen what makes you think Every black person is African. Yeah, that's the that's the thing that they that is misconstrued. Yeah. For for us, after research, um, because I believed not the same way that they're saying. Yeah. I believed that way before. Yeah, this I is don't believe, natives to the land. I don't believe that anymore. We are natives. We're, we're natives to America, but before we were natives to America. We all came from the motherland. That's why it's called the motherland. And you are on the motherland. We and are we're on the, mother, on the motherland. Mother fatherland, because it's both. You can't okay. have the mother without, without the father. father. Okay. This is the mother fatherland that has birthed our whole entire race. Okay. This land. This this land. Okay. So what our message whole do being. you have for those who think they're not from Well, here? because for one, I, being 
Native American, mm -hmm. they call us Indians. Okay. Uh, but not the same as India Indians. India, okay. But if you get the if you get the lineage correct, even the they, mm -hmm. the India people, mm -hmm. came from here. Mm -hmm. I'm they're telling Africans you too. they're Africans too. So many people dispersed themselves hmm. and we found ourselves on america land even though it was taken from us wow well, you see what i mean wow. but there was a starting point for everybody hmm. because what people didn't even teach us in school i had to learn that america the land mass was even underwater at a point of time wow it wasn't until the water receded hmm. that our native indians came on the land on the land okay. but they came from the yeah. mother father so i think they need a little bit of education to they need to yeah, i'm telling you second, this is the second largest continent outside of asia asia, yeah. asia is the first mm. africa is the second. which was still connected and before <laughs> before anything else broke off nobody really left nobody left the continent of africa when we were born here we've only began exploring in and out through the buildings of ships and things like mm. that but before we built the first ship nobody yet or the first boat Nobody ever left this continent. So wow. this is where it all began for wow. our race of people. Wow. Our race of people should not be afraid to come back to where it all began. What about those who came but couldn't stay and had to leave? Well, I mean... To each its own. Deuces. Yeah. I mean, it ain't for everybody. I'll say that. Mm. Africa... Kimmy Ghana ain't for everybody. Okay. You have to be a, you have to be a special person to stay in Ghana. You have to be a special person to stay in Ghana and you have to be a special person to even come to the continent of Africa because you have so many unknowns. You can never really fully prepare to come here because everything is still unknown. Even when you get here, it's still unknown. So you have to get here, get in, and then get acclimated to the spirit of the place and then the spirit of the place will begin to lead you and guide you once you get here. Yeah, Africa's alive. Yeah, it's Africa alive. is alive. I, I can't even express what I mean all the way. It's it's alive. Um, there's so there's so much to still be done because of how much land there is here. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and how many people we have not met yet. Wow. You even have kin kin mm -hmm. folk mm -hmm. that you've never met. Yeah. Trust me, everyone was dispersed and going their own it's ways. True. So true. if we could just again get into this unity mindset um i think we'll be good okay I know we'll be okay okay but you moving back okay let me ask you this without any honesty you guys moving back to the continent will you say it has been all worth it for you yes yes it has been no. it's been worth it because we've learned so much that we did not know i learned a whole nother black i've learned a black language that i didn't get the opportunity to learn in the united states they didn't offer black language courses in the united states no. but now when i move here i'm able to take black language courses from black language people who can speak it fluently and you can tell me where i'm right or where i'm wrong at you're already teaching me something black about myself that i never knew that existed inside of me so i know i can come up to you and say hey charlie hey just saying we we have a good conversation yeah you see what i'm saying but yeah that's a black culture that we don't get to experience in america so i'll always take my black culture over mm -hmm. anything because okay. I, I i support everything black okay. and i want to see our race come out of this 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 pit that we've been buried in mm. yeah. and we can come out mm. as long as we are coming over to help get us all out of it together okay we can come out our our current uh, president said um if you are black every black person is from africa mm. and the black people won't be respected anywhere you are mm. until africa is great and then we will be uh, respected it's I mean, true it's true now if he can just put his money where his mouth is <laughs> <laughs> now he needs to follow suit because we're not political yeah. however because we, because we're for the people mm -hmm. even the government people they're people too yeah we're for unity so if i have to get political i'll get political be it. okay okay yeah, we stand behind we we moved to ghana we're behind this flag this flag represents us all represents us all all of us are star in this mm -hmm. universe yes all of us represents the blood on yes that flag. Mm -hmm. we have the natural resources in the gold and we have the natural resources in the greenery so 
This flag represents us all. When we're here, we're not here as individuals. We're here standing with you, standing with this flag, because we are a star in this universe that's a part of this flag. This, this black star represents me. This black star represents you. This black star represents you. We're all a part of this star in this universe. And I like so that. We're coming here. We are representing what this flag stands for. We're okay. not opposite, but we're not opposed to it. We okay. are one with it. Yeah. And we can help us all move forward. We actually wrote a song when we got here. Mm. Uh, and it's entitled, We Stand as One. And okay. we wrote the anthem. It's an anthem. We wrote the song for the continent of Africa. Wow. Okay. Yeah, so, okay. uh, you know. Uh, the diasporan actually has a region now. You know, Ghana had five. Yes, I mean, not Ghana, yeah, but six regions. Yes. Six regions yes. now. Um, and with that, they have we have our own flag. Yes. And so with that, why not have your own, okay. you know, anthem as right. well? But yes. the anthem is not just for the six regions. Okay. It will reach across Africa. The whole Africa. The whole Africa. Okay. The okay. words. Um, we we are it. one. Yeah. In mind and body, okay. we are one in spirit too, mm. guided by the ancestors across the seas to a land that was meant to be. Wow. We stand tall, we stand strong, wow. we stand as one. Wow. And that is copyrighted, right? Because oh, yeah. Okay, oh, yeah, good. It's copyrighted. That belongs to us. That belongs to us <laughs> because we just get it out. Yeah, no, no. That belongs they to have us. to know exactly how it goes. It's okay. a powerful song. Yeah. All right. Wow. Yeah. Now, before I ask you to send your, send your last message, to the audience, okay. Um, tell me how it's been worth it for you. Okay, he said his part. I want to know how it's been worth it for you, and then you can send your last message for people who are watching right now. Okay. okay. Uh, being here. Yes. Um, I have. I've been humbled. Humbled. Yes. Oh, humbled. I've been humbled. Okay. In what way? Um. To know that you don't have to go and get this. You don't have to live with this. You know, mm -hmm. I can make it without the, the things that I'm so comfortable with in the States. Wow. It's brought me back to reality. Mm. And that's the problem with the entire world right now. You know, it's give me this. This is mine. This is this. I have to have this. Oh, if this is not cold, I don't want it. Mm -hmm. If we get out of that mindset, mm. I think we can get a lot further okay. with one another and I so see. that has taught I see me agree with that. Here <laughs> Ghana, it's been a task oh. yeah. <laughs> but now that i can see that i can live through it it's okay hmm. it's okay. okay i'm getting better every day okay okay <laughs> i like that i like what do you think you guys did different that made it so easy for you to adapt though we stayed together. Uh -huh. we, we okay. did it together. This is my friend. Is, okay. We, we couldn't have, I couldn't do it without my wife. Wow. My wife can't do it without me. You you cute together. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> but uh, we did it together. Wow. And, and it's beautiful. You, it's, when you have a balance like mm. that, it's called my eye. And when you're in balance mm. like that, um, there's nothing that you can achieve. Okay. And so that's that's really the thing. Um, if I was out here by myself, it would probably mm -hmm. be a lot tougher than mm -hmm. I can imagine. But mm -hmm. because I have, I have my balance with me. Everything is mm -hmm. is working the way it's supposed and to. We have obstacles, and, and we have obstacles <laughs> just yeah. like everybody else. Yeah, do. yeah. And we, we have to watch our backs just like everybody else. Yeah. Do. But we make sure that we keep each other up, and we make sure that everybody we meet, we give you good energy. We give okay. you good vibes. I love that. We, we make sure that we 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 want to inspire you as much as we can. Okay. Because we want to get out. We don't want to give off any other type of energy outside True. of inspiration. I like that. I see you, Charlie. Charlie, yeah. You know what I'm saying? We yeah. in the game because I want you to know, okay, this is that. Even that little bit was an extra little ump that I needed to yeah. make my day a little better because yeah. even before that, it was probably a little whack day. Yeah. But yeah. Now that somebody <laughs> I need to know for kind of made me feel a little better. Okay, I got a little bit. I like that. So send, send a last message to people watching right now okay. from the diaspora, from the US, UK. The diaspora. Let's send me some message today. Okay. Last message. So we just want. I just want to say, um, don't be afraid to come to Ghana. Ghana is your home. Ghana is our home. Africa, Africa. is your home. Africa, Al Kabilan is our home. But yes, it has its challenges. Don't get it twisted. Don't listen to no other YouTuber here Sula telling you everything is beautiful. Mm. It's beautifully ugly here, yeah. but it's worth it. I promise you, it's worth it. Come home. Help build it. Help make it better. 
help make it everything that it needs to be. And it's going to give to you just as much as you give to it. That's just the law of reciprocity. When you give, it's going to give back to you. So don't be afraid to come home and give back to what's been given to you for a very long time. I promise you, I love it. You'll love it. What do you have to say? <laughs> God bless our homeland, Ghana, and make our nation great and strong. You guys come back home. Wow. Okay, so we've had such an amazing uh, yes, conversation. Yes, Thank you. I really, you know, I appreciate you coming on the show. I really appreciate it. We appreciate you for okay. having us. Yeah, okay. Thank definitely. You. Wow. So, if you guys did enjoy this amazing episode, please like the video, share, you know, to friends and family, and yes, you know, turn on your post notification and always, you know, come back for more. And if you don't, they have to follow you guys, okay? Uh -huh. So, if you see their information on your screen, I need you to please go on their pages, you know, like their, um, the Facebook, yes. uh, Instagram, mm -hmm. uh -huh. follow it, see what they are doing here, and yeah, reach out to them. And uh, you never know. Maybe you'd need them to, you know, help you correct your vocals. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, yes, this is the end of the video. And, yeah, let's say bye-bye to them. Peace. Peace. Hello, world. It's Kenya and Charles Schaefer. We want to take this opportunity to share with you our newly released album, Comedic Meditations. Our efforts along with the Shrine of Ma'at have truly made this album a success. Comedic Meditation's Temple Music is streaming now on every platform. Go get it.